Good evening. Tonight I'm talking about a very fresh and unknown package for this episode of Little Known Useful R Functions. So unknown that only the people that follow me on Twitter or that I've watched my previous video know about it. It's the loud package that I'm working on right now. And the loud package includes one main function called loudly and a couple of others uh, to make it work. And um, well, first of all, the name might change. Uh, I'm not too happy with the name loud and loudly. So maybe if you have suggestions, don't hesitate. I will show you what it does. And I think uh, that it solves a, a problem that many people have. Um, so at least it's something that that I that I wanted to 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 use, and so I, I've worked on it, and I'm quite happy with it right now. I will keep on adding some features, and uh, I will make it more rich in terms of documentation and tests. But I think the state as it is right now is already not too uh, bad, and actually already useful. So let's see what the uh, loudly function does. So it loudly allows me to define or rather to decorate functions. So I, de I will decorate the log function. Okay, oh yeah, I need to load my package. So now I have log and I have loud log. So let's see the difference between the two. If I do loud log of, let's start with loud log of 10. Okay, I get the result, no problems here. If I do log of a string, okay, I get an error message pretty normal stuff, right? If we look at what happens using my decorated versions, first of all, loudly log, oh, loud log, yeah, loud log, I get something a bit more complex. So loud log returns a list of two elements. The first element is called the result with the result. And the second element is a, uh, a log of stating what happens. So this log is starting and log of 10 started at this time and ended at this time. So I will make the messages a bit more useful, etc. But that's the gist of it. Now, what happens in the case I have an error? In the case I have an error, I get this. Uh, so result is null. There's no result. And I get here an error message. So I get this caution with an X error log started and failed at this time with the following message, non-numeric argument to math mathematical function, okay? Now, loudly is uh, quite strict because it will also fail with messages and warnings. So it, it's really a function that will be very strict. So you either get a very clean result if you get a warning or a, uh, a message, it will also fail. So I might add an option to not fail so the user can choose to not fail with uh, warnings and messages because sometimes it might be a bit too um, yeah too, too too strict but for now it will fail for messages and warnings what is also nice um, is that you can pipe this value so if you look at um, let's go with something like from 1 to 10 and let's use the base pipe and you do something like uh, let's take the square root of this and then let's take the average of this, right? So this will give you a result. I can do the same with loud versions. Uh, first I have to define, so I have to define loud SQRT, which will be loudly SQRT. And then I have to define mean SQRT. And over here I have to add, yeah, so, oh, that's not what I wanted not an issue. Okay, so let's see what happens if I do it like this. If I do it like this, I get the result of null and I get an error message. Why? Well, the problem is this pipe operator, okay, will feed. So loud SQRT, remember, loud SQRT will return a list, a list of two elements. And this pipe operator over here will feed this list to loud mean. But loud mean does not expect a list, okay? Loud mean because mean expects uh, a vector of values, loud mean will also expect a vector of values. So the package comes with a pipe operator, a dedicated pipe operator, that is almost like the crap, 
almost like the uh, Magritte pipe. It just has this little equal sign there. So let's see. Let's first run. Uh, let's first run the the first. You know, crap. What am I doing? Let's first. Huh? Okay. Something weird going on again with my space max. If I just run the first bit, okay, so if I pipe this factor to loudest QRT, as I said, I get this list. Fine. Now I need to pipe this to loud mean, but loud mean is only interested in the result, okay? So this pipe operator does two things under the hood. It will grab the result, okay, give that to mean, and it will grab the log and concatenate this log to the one that loud mean will produce because loud mean would also produce a log as you will see and this pipe operator will concatenate them both so let's see what happens so what happens is that you get a result okay so the same result as before let's take a look right the same result as before so that's already working that's nice and you get your logs. So first you get a log of SQRT and then you log you get the log of the mean. So mean, as you see, is taking the L result and is uh, also saying that it worked and um, yeah, that it, that it worked. Okay. And you can keep keep on piping stuff. Uh, maybe let's uh, let's add something over here. Let me move. Yeah, loud uh, log I had right. And then, you know, I have the loud log. Now imagine, imagine that I do something, uh, maybe, let me, maybe let me put the mean first and let me do a negative vector. So I, I take the mean of a negative sequence of numbers, uh, which will result in a negative number. And I will give that to SQRT. So SQRT will fail and then uh, the result will be null. And this null result will be passed to loud log which will then also fail so let's see what the log looks like well as you see uh, mean no problems however sqrt failed and is produced so that's actually if i'm not mistaken that's actually not even an error uh, if you look at sqrt of minus 10 as you see that's not an error it's a warning message but honestly it should be an error and actually if you watch my previous video in my previous video, I was trying to add this uh, to capture the error messages. And um, and yeah, uh, warnings, uh, I, I realized uh, during at the end of the video that warnings were not, or rather that the functions like this would not give errors when they should be giving errors. And then they, they would return warnings. And so warnings are not getting captured. And I... I've had a lot of problems with that. Actually, I've been working on this for the past maybe two weeks or something. Not every day because Elden Ring came out. So <laughs> that's also taking up some of my time. But um, I've been working on this and I've got a lot of help, I must say, from the R Studio community forums. So a uh, big thank you to the people that, that helped me. Um, and yeah, so they helped me write, write this. Um, loud or rather loudly works with any function, so you can do also things with the dplyr, um, and you can do something like, you know, loud select, maybe let's go with loud select, so loudly select, let's go with, uh, uh, crap. let's go with filter, and let's go with, uh, maybe summarize, let's do, uh, let's do a, a little, a little workflow, a little deep layer workflow, right? Uh, yes. Good. And let's go with empty cars. Let's pipe this to, uh, let me loud. Well, actually I should then pipe like this. Oh, actually that's a good, let, let me show you what's going to happen here. Actually loud select so loud select expects a data frame. So this, I can use the Magritte pipe, okay? Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm going to select uh, AM, SIL, MPG, and HP, whatever. Now I need to use my pipe because I'm piping to 
a, another loud function uh, to loud filter. Let's say that I'm going to filter am equals one. And finally, I'm going to loud summarize. Oh yeah, and I need to use my pipe. Loud summarize, uh, let's go with mean HP. Okay, let's go with something like that. Let's see what happens. So loud summarize, oh yeah, I wrote it with a Z, which is British English, I think, Z. And yeah, so I get my, um, I get my data frame, okay? So my data frame of only one element. Um, and, uh, and I get my very nice, uh, very nice log stating everything that happened. And I can also now, uh, so the package also comes with a function called, I think it's pick, I called it pick, I think, pick the log. So if I just want to get the log, uh, I get just the log. And you see here I have to use the uh, dplyr pipe again because pick expects a list okay so you don't need to use pick and you, you could use uh, so i think per comes with with pluck or you could use even the dollar sign uh, i just wrote this function just you know to for, for the package to be complete but uh, honestly uh, you, you could you could uh, you could use something else huh? you could also pick the result and there you just get your data frame um so yeah so that's loudly um, as i said there's another function that comes with the package that loudly uses under the hood which is called purely so purely is actually the function that allows me to capture the errors and the warnings and the messages so if i do something like purely a log of a um, of a character i get nothing as a result and i get the actual error message and what is quite interesting and what gave me a lot of trouble were dplyr functions because dplyr functions like select for example uh, let me uh, do so empty cars has no bm uh, column so if i try to select that now i get this error message and that is actually an rlang error message so rlang which is a package from the tidyverse um implements its own types of errors called rlang errors. So it's a class that inherits from errors. So you can work with them as you would with any errors. That's not the problem. And But what is interesting is that you get this more, so you get like a two-layered error message. So you get the error message from, from R, so the basic stuff, so this column does not exist. And then you get something that is more like human-readable, human-friendly, um, that tells you in, in plain English basically what's what's going on. So that's quite interesting. As you see, the formatting is a bit screwed up. I need to clean that, but uh, that should be a minor a minor issue. Um, let's also try something with um, uh, with filter. So if I try to filter BM, what happens here uh, is I get also oh yeah that's really really not that's really ugly. But here I get this human readable portion of the error message. So there's a problem computing this. And then I get it caused by the error, object PM not found. So I, I don't know what these symbols are. Yeah, I need to get rid of that, uh, but that should not be a huge, a huge problem. Um, so yeah, uh, let me just show you on my other screen. So the um, package, as uh let me just grab the window yep here it is so the package as a uh, a website so you can uh, you can read there's a readme showing you uh, very quickly how it works oh there's this bind loudly function that i haven't talked about but basically um bind loudly allows you to uh not have to use the pipe operator that comes with the package so you can use the standard pipe operator if you instead of using a loud group by, you do bind loudly loud group by. So the README explains uh, how it works, but you can of course use the pipe operator that uh, that works very well. Um, oh, here yeah, there's an error. Yeah, I get these weird error messages. So um, like, and I get the same from my unit tests, and I have to 
to deal with, I, I have to solve this. I get, so the, my unit tests, or here I see the same thing. When I define this loud, so you see, I define the loud log over here, or loud, yeah, loud exponential. So I have loud SQRT, loud exponential, and here loud exponential could not find function loud exponential. It's defined right here. So I don't understand what's going on, um, but it works, no worry. Uh, the, I don't know why I get this weird and I get the same problem with my unit tests. So functions that I define in my unit tests do not get defined within the environment of the unit tests for some weird reason, um, but, but it works, no worries. <laughs> Um, I also have here a, uh, an article or two articles. Well, this one is more of a draft. I will talk about that later because this is actually uh, what you're seeing in this package implements uh, what is called a monad. And I'm going to talk about monads later. Um, so it's not too important to understand how it works, but this is basically a monad. Um, but a real world example, uh, I use code from a, an old blog post of mine from 2018 which I now rewrite using uh, loudly. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is, yeah, as I said, a real world example. And then what is nice is that, you know, you clean, I clean everything. I do my, my transformations, my group buys, my filters, whatever. And then at the end, you know, I, I have an object. And if I save that object with, for example, save RDS, and I give that to a colleague, my colleague could then pick the log and see what, what I did, basically, okay? Again, the error messages, I need to work a little bit on formatting, make it a bit more readable, but but it's there. At least, you know, you have an idea, okay, first you select these columns, then you pivot longer, etc., etc., and you see how long the code um, took to run, so not very long, as you see, uh, just like literally one second, um, but because it's a really small data set that is included in the package, by the way, so this data set is included, so it, it took just one second, but something that I want to add in the future is the running time of each uh, of each function and not show it, but then include a function in the package that allows you to, uh, just as I would here, pick the log, I would pick the running times. And uh, so you could then, you know, add them together. You could do a lot of, uh, you could do statistics and basically even on the, on the running time. So that's the next feature that is planned. And also what is also planned is that this, um, this objects, basically this lists, they're simple lists for now, but I want to define them as a uh, as a class that I would call a, a loud object, a loud value, uh, and uh, and then I would you know write some print methods for this uh, objects, etc. So that's also planned in the future. And then you could pick the result and you see the result. Okay, so you see the result, you, you can work with the result, but you can also then take a look at what happened. And I really think that this is uh, useful. This is something that I, I wish I had. There are other packages that they implement similar similar things. Uh, this is not like the, the only package that does that. But what I like about, about this approach is that it's fairly similar to uh, safely and possibly and quietly these functions from Per. So if you know these functions, you should here be fairly familiar with uh, the approach here. It's basically the same. So yeah, so I hope you enjoy this video and you find this package useful. If you do use it, uh, let me know how it goes. Uh, don't, don't use it in production yet, of course. Uh, this is not released on CRAN yet. This is just available on GitHub. It, early version, early development, etc. Uh, but if you find it interesting, don't hesitate to test it out. Let me know if it works well with your use cases. If you have a better name than loud, let me know, but not okay. Not a play on word with R and uh, and log like logger or logifier or this type type of thing. Some something else, please. <laughs> something else. So yeah, if you have some ideas, um, let me know, and and yeah, try to break it. Try to make it bug. Uh, send suggestions, um, contributions, etc. Welcome. So uh, yeah, just. Enjoy and uh, stay safe.